Hey, and uh, welcome to my tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to install Linux Mint 17.3 Rosa. Um, any Linux will work, basically. Um, or basically any operating system. It'll be just a slightly bit different. Um, I'm also going to show you a little tip um, on how to get more video RAM. The default RAM, you can only use 128. But uh, I know how to increase it to 256. And, you know, it, it, it improves it you know, quite decently. So the first thing you're going to want to get is uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox. That's what I'm going to be using to, uh, you know, emulate, well, is it emulate? Basically, yes, em emulate a uh, operating system. Right, so you just go down here. Depending on, you know, what operating system you use, I'm using Windows, as you can probably tell. So I'd go for this. So once that's downloaded, just uh, Google, uh, you know, Linux Mint. Um, okay, so this is free to download. Its code name's Rosa. Rosa. Okay, um, I use the Cinnamon. I use uh, the 64-bit. Um, you can use the 32-bit. It will basically be exactly the same. The only thing is you'll be limited to two to three gigs of RAM. Okay, so uh, once that's all downloaded. Um, install, you know, Oracle. Once that's installed, you'll be presented with this, except you won't have uh, any of these. These are some of my virtual machines. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a new one. I'll just call this uh, Linux, Miss, uh, Linux Mint Test. Oh, that's kind of cool. I typed in Linux and it just detected it. And it wants me to do that. That's correct. There you go, next. How much RAM you want to use? Um, depending how much uh, RAM you want to use, you know, sure you can, you know, do it like that. But if you want like an exact, and you're bad at maths, just simply type into the calculator. 1024. Say you wanted 8 gigs, for example. So it's times 8. 8192. Now uh, create a virtual hard disk. Go create. I just always use this one, it's fine. I normally go fixed size because it takes a bit longer to create, but on some systems it's often faster to use. Um, now this can vary on like what you're depending, like what you're going to need. I think you need at least 9 gigs or so just for the operating system, so uh, just whack in whatever. This one's only going to be a test, so I'll add in 20 gigs. Oh, sorry, my nose. So once that creates that, you'd be good to go. Alright, so that's been done. Now you're presented with, uh, you know, the virtual machine we just uh, created. Now, um, as I was saying before, now these are the default options basically. The display is you know, 12 megs. So we're going to click on settings. Wait about 50 years apparently. Okay, now. You can change the processes depending on, you know, what CPU you've got. I've got uh, an i7, 2700K. It's fairly old these days, but oh, it still does the job. So I'm going to add in 4, you know, why not? Now the display, 12, we can crank that up all the way up to 128. Enable 3 acceleration. Acceleration. Don't know what the hell I just said then. Now, click on OK. Uh, you just thinking, you know, oh, but I just said, you know, you could get 256. Here's some proof. 256, and I think I've got on this one too. Okay. So, you might be asking, you know, how do you do this? Alright, um, not 100% sure, but just to be safe, close that down, and go to where your, uh, virtual computers are. I think default, they're in, you know, documents or whatever. I have mine on my D drive. Now, look for the machine that you've just made. Now, I think it's this one. Open it up with Notepad. And you'll get a whole bunch of stuff like this. Oh, man. Let me just turn down that size. Okay. Now, you got to look for something. Okay, it's near here somewhere. It says memory RAM size. I'm pretty sure it's around here. Ah, uh, video display, 
VRAM size, 128. Monitor count, blah, 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 blah. Change this to 256. Now, this is quite a simple change, so it just works. Um, I've tried 512, but it says it's too much, so I think it requires further tweaking. So, just for the moment, you know, it's better than 128 at least. So, anyway, oh yes, go back to settings. I forgot to do this, it doesn't really matter, actually. If you don't click on settings and tell, you know, what to use, it comes up asking, you know, what do you want to do? You know, you got to select, you know, either your drive, so you can um, either burn the, the ISO um, to a disk, or, you know, you can just use the ISO file itself. Um, so I've done this obviously before. Um, here's Linux Mint. Blah, 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 blah. Start. So this will start. Just hit enter to start it. Okay, start Linux Mint. Don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it works. So, <laughs> if it happens with you, then it's all good. Okay. There you go, you're done. You're, you've installed it. No, I'm just kidding. Basically, you can, you know, have a bit of a play around. Uh, with the operating system before you install, so you know, if you just want to have a simple quick look and you don't want to install, you know, you can do this, you know, even on a physical physical computer. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, personally, I like the interface, you know. Um, you know, I'm quite the Linux noob, though. I know almost nothing about it, to be completely honest. I just know how to run, you know, emulate Windows programs on here. So, right click and We'll just double click on the disk. Choose your language. Okay, for best results, yeah, there you go. You need 9.4 gigs available space. Connect to the internet. It normally just, you know, automatically sets it. As you saw, I didn't set anything. So click continue. Alright, erase because there's nothing on it. It has to be formatted. Uh. Okay, so it's just saying it's going to be making these changes, it's going to be switching this to this and blah 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 blah. Go get continue. Okay, close that calculator. Close that. It'll pick where you are. Oh shit, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked now. No, I'm, I'm from over here. Yeah, no. Z4, Sydney. Hobart. How about down there, man? You can type in, you know, where you live. Like, uh, you know, say I lived in uh, Japan or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway. Melbourne show. Okay, click continue. It's not that important. Uh, you can choose your, choose your keyboard layout. We use, you know, if you're not 100% sure or you'd like to know. You can detect it. Alright, so uh, you require a password because uh, anything you do on it, um, it's kind of like that admin privileges uh, on Windows. Hey, like you get open, it's like, oh, are you sure you want to open this? It's basically like that, but it's like, hey, um, type in the password before you know I open this program. So, um, there we go. Whatever. <laughs> Just, yeah. You know what, buddy? Bacon. Wait, better yet, just for the video, we'll call it HD Bacon. There we go. Password can be 123. Now, I have it logged in automatically because, you know, I don't want to type in my password every time I just want to turn on this. Plus, I'm not going to be keeping it, but, you know, if you want to, you know, feel free. Okay. So you can, you know, have a bit of a scan, a bit of a read, I mean, <laughs> uh, while it installs all this. So it comes with Firefox, Flash, and Java. Uh, music programs, you know, it uses Banshee, basically replaces Windows Media Player, or VLC. It does come with VLC for memory. 
Yes, it does. For watching videos on that, you got VLC, Totem, and VO Codex. Do you know basically play anything? Uh, G Thumb. I think that's a photo viewer by the looks of it. Some degree photo editor by the looks of it. That's cool. All right. So uh, pff, internet, basically MSN, Yahoo. Oh wow. Well, they might need to update that. Let me say MSN. Anyway. Say so Thunderbird, Pigeon, Hexchat. That's cool. I'm guessing like there's no Hotmail, so that might be you know Hotmail basically. Uh, okay, so you know it's got PDF, you know, able to open PDF files. It's got basically a Microsoft Office. It uses Open Office. It's you know pretty close you know to a Office. It, it's quite usable. Um, you know, there's uh, software you can get on there, such as uh, Skype, Steam, Google Earth, Picasa, Picasa? Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> and uh, here, here's what I was telling you about. You, like, you can actually run a virtual computer on a virtual computer if you wanted to. I, I at least assume it works. It's got the software to do it. Um, but then, you know, as I said, you can basically follow what I'm doing right now if you were installing this on a physical computer basically. Um, Wine is what's used to emulate Windows um, software like that means programs, games. It's not always 100% might require a few tweaks and such of uh, the settings here but you know most most of the time I've been able to get things working and me being a complete noob and not knowing what I'm really doing you know I, I didn't do too bad um, okay, so just like a Windows operating system or a Mac, you know, you can choose the background, the effects, the fonts, you know, yada yada. Uh, yeah, so then these are the updates. Um, what it means by level 1 is, you know, they're the safest. I think when it starts to get level 4 and 5, that's, you know, possible it can break or it's untested sort of thing, so you don't have to download them, but um, you can still search for them and if you want to take the risk then sure you know you know there's nothing wrong the, the worst thing will happen is you kill your system in terms of operating system you know you're not going to like explode your case or anything like that there you go if you maybe I should check this out you know <laughs> if uh, you know you get into a bit of trouble you, you know you can either do this or you know do a bit of googling even but um yeah so I guess we'll just uh, wait for this to finish. Okay, so once that's done, um, depending on your internet connection, that's why mine took you know quite some time because it was downloading all the language packs. Um, yeah, so once you're done, you know, just uh, you can either keep testing if you want or just simply go restart now. So I'm going to hit restart now. I'm going to click devices. I'm going to remove the disk and press enter. And there you have it. You've just successfully installed Linux Mint 17.3. But um, yeah, if there's any questions, you know, feel free to uh, you know, ask me. You know, I'll help you as best as I can. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.